Fox News host Tucker Carlson, who has in recent years chosen to promote a sort of common sense white nationalism to gain viewers, recently asked on air, how precisely is diversity our strength? Do you get along better with your neighbor or your coworkers if you can't understand each other or share no common values? Do you get along better with your neighbors who you can't understand or share common values? Notice that. What Carlson did there was a quick elision from not sharing ethnicity to not sharing values. I noticed a lot of people on these videos do that, where they'll make a jump from one topic to a topic that they cannot debate to a topic that they feel they can easily debate as though that they're natural synonyms. In fact, it's just the opposite. I discovered when people have a chance to create a bond that is not based on skin color or culture, what they actually connect on are the things they value in common. Dr. Catherine W. Phillips made the conclusion that it's a mental friction that creates diversities productive energy. Members of a homogeneous group, I'm sorry, of a homogeneous group, rest somewhat assured that they will agree with one another, that they will understand one another's perspectives and beliefs, that they will be easy, that they will be able to easily come to a consensus. But when members of a group notice that they are socially different from one another, they change their expectations. They anticipate differences of opinion and perspective. They assume they will need to work harder to come to a consensus. This logic helped us, helps us to explain both the upside and the downside of diversity. People work harder in diverse environments, both cognitively and socially. They might not like it, but the hard work can lead to better outcomes. The power of diversity can help in real life jur juries find their way to justice as well. One of the professors I visited at Harvard Business School, Samuel Summers, borrowed real jurors from a Michigan court and ask them to reach a verdict in mock trials he conducted. Of the six person juries Summers organized, some were composed of four white and two black jurors, and some had exclusively white people. The diverse juries deliberated longer and performed better in part because the white people upped their game in the mixed company. White people in the diverse teams cited more facts, made fewer errors, and were more amenable to discussions of racism when in the diverse setting versus the all white groups. So it turns out that diversity that is causing an often unconscious racial panic in so many white Americans is actually our biggest strategic asset. The research has borne that this out in education, jurisprudence, business, and the economy, simply put, we need each other. Now, that is um, the solidarity dividend chapter of this is chapter 10 of The Sum of Us by Dr. Heather McGee. Now, when I first read through that 
uh, section when it said the white jurors stepped their game up. At first, I was like, wow, that's a little biased because why are we just focusing on the white jurors? Well, we're focused on the white jurors because there are more white people in this country than there is anybody else. You're likely to have, uh, especially in particular communities, and this is a tradition of um, jurisprudence and racial outcomes based on whiteness. It's just a fact. It's just a reality. Okay. That's one reason why the right to vote was denied to black people. So black people could not sit on. That was one of the reasons why black people in the civil rights were fighting for the right to vote because of the disproportionate outcomes that was happening in court. If I can't vote, I can't sit on the jury. So that's why people like me who don't vote always stay registered as a voter because I do and may participate in jurisprudence. And I want to be able to have a degree of control over what happens to me and what happens to my community in that area. So I, as though, though I may not value the voting system and its history in the country, I do understand that um, I have more representation in the jurisprudence process and people are going to agree or disagree on that. But the point is, you have to understand that this was done in an academic setting. So they were purposely watching behavior. So I was glad to see when I kept on reading where she said that fewer mistakes were made, that white cited more case facts, which implies that in the all white juries, they didn't. So what we're learning is that whites function better for the whole in diverse groups. Now, history has shown whites tend to function better for the interest of whites in all white settings. So now what we have to do is see what our personal um, agendas are and face them and stand on it. You know, uh, don't say I'm for everybody if I'm for white people. Don't say I'm for everybody if I'm for black, just black people. If I'm, if I am just for this group, then offer a sincere narrative, okay? Or if we truly want to do what's best for society, this is research that is telling us that this is why inclusion is important. Now, there are also arguments for segregation, but as far as far as credibility of an assistance of a system of exchange and lucrative fairness, it is generally better to have mixed, mixed representation in the room. And if that applies in courts, I dare say, it applies in banking because if if the room is full of because we're just talking about how people communicate if the room is full of all white bankers what this research says is they're probably less likely to be as efficient and function under a homogenous thought of common values as opposed to if someone else is in the room, they're, by this research, less likely to work harder 
they're less likely to have to put race into the discussion or outcome if another race isn't there. So if you are a person that's wondering why are black people historically trying to interject themselves in society, just be happy with what you have or whatever your thought may be, this is why. Because by the sheer numbers, we're in a democracy, if that's what we choose to believe. Um, at the very least, at, technically, we are a republic. Literally, we're an oligarchy. But in either way that you put it, the greater proportion of our community is white. And the greater proportion of our community of power is white. And the greater proportion, and I'm speaking historically, I'm not talking about you and your parents and your farm. I'm talking historically, broadly. If this example of with these juries holds, what about the rooms that there are no black faces in in education, in insurance, in health care, in public education, in safety? Um, all of these different things are producing disproportionate outcomes. So inclusion brings about a different conversation. And we may come up with the same outcome, but we have to at least consider some of the things that we as a group don't think about. 